my piece of wood that I'm going to make the clock around. I used I cut a piece of 10 by 10 just pine. You can get anywhere, any lumber yard. And then I hollowed out the back for the clock mechanism to go in. Cuz whatever you use as a clock face, it can only be as thick as the threads minus the thickness of thickness of the nut that holds this in. So that's why I had to hollow out at least half an inch here. A little more actually. So that'll go through there. Um, while I was looking for ideas for this project, someone actually did uh, use a small canvas from a hobby store. Of course the canvas is very thin so they just poked a hole through it and shoved this through and attached it but I wanted mine to be a little more substantial I want to put a frame around it just how I want it to look and I also wanted to do um, a photo transfer I'm trying to make this look kinda old-fashioned and so I made my image on the computer and then I mirrored it or I reversed it so everything is backwards from what it's supposed to be and I don't have a laser jet printer so I took it to an office supply store and they copied my image with a laser jet so our hero John Cleese when this is all said and done will be looking to the right right now he's looking to the left when we see him so right now I'm going to coat this in this gloss gel medium and that is what the ink is going to stick to hopefully and I've never done this before so it's kind of a first time for me too here And you can get this medium from any art supply place also. Look around the acrylic paint section. Use a little more. And most people use, do this process on bare wood. All of the projects that I've watched to get ideas from so I hope doing it on paint will work it's gonna wipe the excess off the edges now to line it up I just took a wood skewer and I punk punched a hole through the very center where the clock hands are gonna be and that's just hopefully gonna help me line it up a little easier that in there. Looking pretty good. Take that out. I've just got an old plastic card. I'm going to try to get all the air bubbles out of it. And now I'm going to take my wet rag and throw this on here. And let that set for a few minutes. And let's see what we got here.
I'm going to cover it back up and let it soak in a little more. All right, let's see how it works now. In the other videos I've seen where they do this, they recommend using the thinnest paper that a printer has. And now I see why. When I asked her to use the thinnest paper they had where I had it printed, she kind of gave me a blank stare. So I just said, use whatever you have, and that's what I got. So it'll come off a little harder, but it looks like we'll get it. It's looking pretty good. Surprised it made such a good transfer. I mean, there's no lines or anything in it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, uh, may I see your city wall? Yes, certainly, yes. Yes, that's it, yes. Mm -hmm. It's not particularly silly, is it? I, I mean, the right leg isn't silly at all, and the left leg merely does a forward aerial half turn, every alternate step. Yes, well, I think with, with government backing, I could make it very silly. <laughs> Mr. Pew so I decided I'm going to probably laminate. I'm going to use the printed legs, and I'm going to laminate them onto plastic. My lovely wife has a laminator, so hopefully I can convince her to use it, or let me use it. Alright, so I have these hollow punches. Uh, you can often find these like in the cheap tool bin at hardware stores, lumber yards, or you can just order them obviously. And I'm going oversize where the particular hand goes. So this will be the larger one, will be the hour hand because it has a much larger hole. So it fits over there nice. So I think I'll do the very crooked leg with the big one. Better move that. And we're getting there. Didn't know how this would work on this plastic. There we go. Smooshed it a little bit. 
try it from the other side. And that fits over there nice. Now we'll do the little one with a minute hand. And I left everything here again. It's already coming through. That laminate still on there and it peeled off. Okay, and that goes there and that fits just fine. So now, I will glue these on here. As you can see, I'm just using E6000. Seems to be able to glue anything to anything. And I'm gluing myself to the project. There we go. Looks good. And if you can, I would just use the whole pans because you have that much more surface to glue, at least as much as you can. I think I'll have to weight that one down somehow. Okay, we'll let that dry. E6000, your friend. You're really interested in city walks, aren't you? Oh, rather. Well, take a look at this then. <laughs>
And here we are, all finished. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty good. There's just two things I would do differently. Number one is when I spread on that gel medium to transfer the photo, I put it on a little thick so I can just see lines around the image where that medium filled in the grain of the wood and I don't think you could ever get away from that completely but I I should have spread it on a little thinner I think but I was really happy with how the transfer worked it worked really well on the white background looks really good and number two is I like using the plastic hotel key cards as a back for the legs made them nice and strong and they'll never warp the problem is on the minute hand it was too thick to get the nut on to hold the legs on so I ended up having to take a 3 8 drill bit and drill out the plastic down to the brass clock hand glued on the back side just had to make room for this nut so that I could screw it on. Not a huge deal, but I'd probably still do the same thing. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's how I did it, and it's ready to go on the wall. Thanks for watching. <laughs>